Okay, so in the next part of this lecture module, we'll focus on how to establish a plant in vitro. So first, you need to identify the plant, which is generally, as I told you, based on the commercial use or the value addition or other aspects of the plant or rarity. So after you select the plant, you have to sterilize the tissue because when a plant is derived from the field, it's generally associated with other tissues and other tissue as well as soil. Or it may be, they may have bacteria, fungi, or viruses associated with it. So what we do is we sterilize the plant. And how we do this is by using, for example, one is the bleach. We use a low concentration of bleach. We can use mercury chloride, or we can use a wetting agent in conjunction with bleach. Wetting agent like Queen, which is basically a soap, which will kill off the bacteria. So we need to repeat this procedure many times uh, through many stages before we get a sterile plant. Get a sterile tissue. So once we, uh, the reason why we need to sterilize is because we will take this plant tissue and establish it in the culture medium, which is uh, which has a lot of sugars and carbon source, and the culture medium is also acidic. So this tends to uh, basically permit the growth of fungi. So any fungus or spores associated with that tissue will propagate rapidly in media and they will overwhelm the plant and basically kill off your tissue culture. So sterilization is a critical step. So once you sterilize it and then your plant is established in vitro, you'll know in three to four weeks, if there's no fungus, no visible signs of uh, fungus or bacteria, you can then go into propagation, which is basically dividing the tissue and propagating it in many tubes. Okay, and then it goes on until regeneration and then you condition. So these are the steps. So first you select, sterilize, establish in vitro, then you make, develop your callus, you induce the shoots, and once your plants are ready, you can transfer them to the greenhouse. Okay, that's the process of hardening. We can't transfer the plant directly from the tissue culture medium into the field. This is because the plant is already growing in sugar-rich medium. So it needs to be weaned away. So what we do, suppose our medium has a concentration of 10% sucrose or 5% sucrose, we need to be in a way like 5%, 2%, 1%, and then 0% and then establish. Okay, so that's the procedure, general procedure. Okay, so this is the general procedure. You select, you identify, sterilize, establish in vitro, clonal, propo clonally propagate, and then you harden and grow out the plant. Okay, so as I told you, the identification of the plant may be based on rarity. So, if we are in Sabah, the most, uh, how do I already say, the most classical example will be orchids or gingers. Orchid, ginger, then uh, other rare plants, for example, rattan, they are all need to be established in tissue culture, even, even the dipterocups, the rare trees. So, if you establish it in culture, it's a good opportunity for a biotechnology industry or biotech business. Okay, because people will want those plants. People from outside Sabah will want to have those plants. And certain, certain species which are CITES, we cannot actually export from Sabah. But however, when we establish in tissue culture, you can take permission and export these plants. Okay, so that's a good opportunity for biodiversity hotspots. So you select the plant tissue based on totipotency. Now, what totipotency refers to is the ability of a cell to divide and to differentiate as well. So, in the plant, the cell which is the most potent is the growing cells. For example, you take your leaf, right, and then you open it and you'll have an apical meristem at the base of your leaf. Or have you seen a banana? You will, If you take a banana plant, it's actually derived from one meristem. There's only one meristem. So you, you shave off everything else, you split, and then you'll end up with a meristem which will be about the size of your thumb. And then you can actually cut that further and you can establish that in tissue culture. In fact, if you want to establish a banana plant in the lab, you can bring me a sucker, you can get some sucker and I'll show you how to establish it. It grows very easily in the lab. Okay, so banana, because the meristem in banana has two advantages. One is actively growing. Secondly, because so deep down inside it is sterile. Other plants on the other hand, for example, for orchids, we have to use different methods because orchid, we generally use the capsule. If the capsule is broken, it's already lost, it's, it's compromised. So it has some bacteria or fungi. So, okay, so sterilization is done using different media. For example, you can use, a, a, as I told you, a bleach, a commercial bleach, diluted or mercury chloride. 
or other agents which will basically kill off bacteria and fungi. It is not recommended that you use antibiotics or antifungals because they interfere with the plant's metabolic pathway. So we don't use, we try to avoid or basically eliminate antibiotics. So these are the solutions. So we have ethanol, calcium hypochlorite. So mercury chloride is toxic, so you need to take precaution when working with it. So calcium hypochlorite is a good alternative. Sodium hypochlorite has sodium ions, which may, some plants are very sensitive to sodium. So in that case, use calcium hypochlorite. Ethanol, if you use, you have to make sure it's removed completely because ethanol can kill tissue as well. Yes, so these are things. And the important factor is contact time. So for instance, when we, when it's a new plant, okay, we need to establish contact time. So I will take my tissue and keep it in calcium hypochlorite. 2.5% maybe for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, maybe one hour. And then I will take out the tissue, wash it and establish on media and see which concentration killed off the fungus or bacterial colonies. So if you, if some concentration is too strong, it may kill off the plant. So we have to establish a optimal concentration. So this is a critical step in the establishment of plant in vitro. Okay, the medium. Okay. So now in media, right, if you took a plant under normal circumstances growing in the field, you will basically have the NPK, nitrogen, uh, uh, phosphorus and potassium. You give it, and in addition to that, you have the micronutrients and the macronutrients. So you have magnesium, you have to give manganese, zinc, boron, or, and all the other, molybdenum, for example, molybdenum is critical. So this uh, required for the plant to, to grow. So when you uh, take that plant and try to establish in, in vitro, you need to supply all the nutrients. So we have the macronutrients, which are the NPK, and the micronutrients, which are the boron, molybdenum, and manganesium, iron. You have to give it in a form which the plant can uptake. So you have uh, these two elements. Then you have the carbon source. Now, because you have taken the plant from the field and established in tube, in vitro, there is certain compromise uh, of the photosynthetic efficiency. So we refer, uh, we replace the carbon source basically you can use glucose or sucrose so traditionally or conventionally plants will fix sunlight into sugars but when we establish it in tissue culture we have to provide the sugars as in the artificial medium so that's what we need to do in addition to this we have the phytohormones so carbon sources we have different carbon sources sucrose glucose fructose so we have to determine the carbon source which is ideal for that plant Certain carbon sources may be mutagenic. So they may induce what is known as somoclonal variation. So if we provide, for instance, certain carbon sources, they may, instead of getting a plant which is true to type, we may get a mutant, okay? Because they will mutate the plant. Because conventionally, right, in the field, the plant is not given sugar. It fixes carbon to produce sugar. But when we do tissue culture, we provide it with sugar. So if it's too high or too low, the plant will react to that. Okay, certain uh, metabolic pathways may be suppressed. So we have different carbon sources. So these are the carbon sources and this is the utilization. So research done by uh, Neto and Otoni actually shows that sucrose actually generate callus. So sucrose is very good to, for callogenesis because we want to convert any tissue into callus. So sucrose is good for callogenesis. However, for budding, glucose is better. So sometimes in, in the lab you may have to change Okay, so sucrose is good for producing callus, but when you want to produce buds, you need to change the media and use glucose. However, for sh shooting, maltose is better. And for producing of multiple shoots, you see lactose is better. So this is a classic example of how you have to change the media as the, as the tissue progresses, the temporal, the time. Place. So you need to change sugars to get different kinds of tissue or different forms organelles okay so culture media is basically the general media so one of the most classical uh, media which is used is murashige and scoop medium or ms medium we also have vest invent gambogs so tissues like orchid may require vest invent which has a lower concentration of nutrient because sometimes if we give too much ammonical nutrient right like ammonia sources like nitrogen or you have uh, like ammonium nitrate they may burn certain tissue, they may not be compatible. So orchids are very sensitive, so we use vesin and vent, 
for general tissue like rice tissue or seeds you can use murashi gen scoop so this media is basically you need to subculture because the media is consumed by the growing tissue so you need to subculture it every week or every two weeks based on the growth of the tissue so you have different as i told you different media for different kinds of plants and then you have the micronutrients and the macronutrients so macronutrients are basically npk and you have the micronutrients so if you don't provide micronutrients you will also have mutation okay and you have vitamins so vitamins need to be provided because as i told you it's established in vitro so you don't it the plant loses its ability to develop natural compounds so you need to supply these compounds in the medium and one of the important compound is myo inositol okay is inositol is a kind of a sugar so you need to supply it in order to enable the plant to grow propagate okay so this is the composition of medium for your reference you can read through the slides and then ph now ph is essential for plants in order to uptake nutrients you need to get the optimal ph in place so for example if the soil is too acidic the the nutrients are present in the soil but the plant cannot absorb or uptake if the if the soil is too alkaline it's also difficult for plant to uptake certain things because each compound has certain solubility in soil for example iron in acidic condition it will form a sulfate whereas it will dissociate whereas under alkaline condition it may form a it may take a form of a compound which is difficult for the plant to absorb so the nutrient is there but you cannot absorb so this is why ph becomes critical for media okay so this is a chart of media as you can see the ideal ph is around 5 to that you can see 5.5 to 6.5 so this is the ideal medium at which all the compounds are available to the plant however if you go towards the acid you can see the availability tapers off and when you go towards the alkaline some are absorb for example sulfur under alkaline condition you get lot of sulfur available to the plant however the other ones for instance the iron will be reduced because iron is available under acidic conditions so in order to compromise the media has to be in that ph range about 5.5 usually we go up to 7 but not into alkaline because then the plant will have no nutrient i mean it will absorb nothing and it will basically die out okay so the other one is phytohormones as you know we have two types one is the auxins and one is the cytokinin so in addition to this plants produce their own natural compounds known as brassinosteroids okay they are like plant steroids which are used uh, which are basically used by the plant to differentiate however we don't have brassinosteroids in the form which can be added to tissue culture we don't have the chemically active compound commercially available so what we do is we use auxins and cytokinins so among the cytokinins one of the most commonly used one is kinetin okay so what a cytokinin basically does it provides the 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 base bases required for the nucleotides to basically build up they it provides the kinetin provides the basic building blocks for the dna molecule so when kinetin is there the plant is basically having a induction to grow and basically to grow into shoots so you have kinetin then you'll have shoots okay and then you have the rooting compound which are indole acetic acid and a derivative which is called indole 3 butyric acid so if you look at a plant growing under normal circumstances the tip of the plant basically the top produces the auxin okay this auxin then propagates to the plant and then it causes the induction of different kinds of tissue so auxins will basically be produced at the tip they will propagate through the plant and below the plant you know it's in the the root is in the darkened portion is below the soil so this auxin then becomes active in the dark okay yeah. so this is uh, this is you have you need to understand this because when you do tissue culture for instance you want to do root induction we expose it to indole acetic acid in the medium we keep it in the dark for about one or two days so the auxin can work however because indole acetic acid if exposed to light it will break down and then it will have no effect okay on the other hand kinetin is produced in the roots synthesize and it travels through the plant and then it has its effect on the shoot so you can see the biosynthesis takes place in one tissue but the action actually takes place in other tissue auxin going from the tip to the root and producing root and then the cytokinin moving upwards to the stem okay so these are things when you do your tissue culture right you should be aware of these things playing around so kinetin for example will not break down in light because it should 
So auxin will break down in the presence of light. Now when you do your calculations for auxin cytokinin, it's always done in ratios. You can't add purely kinetin or purely indole acetic acid. You need to add a ratio. So if you want to induce, for example, shoots, higher concentration of the cytokine and lower concentration of the auxin and the reverse for the roots. Okay, so these are the auxins. So 2,4-D is an auxin, but 2,4-D because it induces callogenesis, it induces the formation of callus. So indole-3-acetic acid is also used for callogenesis, but the effect is significantly lower. And then it's not standard for all plants. Some plants may respond very rapidly to 2,4-D, some may not. For example, rice, 1 milligram per liter of the 2,4-D will induce callus, whereas other plants may not. You can try and establish some of the native trees. Actually, it's a good thing, you know, for teak. They are established from the, from the uh, tissue. However, if you want to get good plants, right, you can est actually establish them from the seed. You can try durian, or maybe tara, the seed. So it's easy to sterilize. I, I have established one culture last time of the tamarind, you know, oh. the tamarind plant. So it's very easy to establish. Reduce. So you, if you are interested, we can work on certain plants which are native. You, but you, we work from the seed and we sterilize them. For instance, teak seed, you can establish in tissue culture. However, you need to sterilize it, heat it and sterilize it. Because when you heat it, right, it induces the formation of certain phenolic compounds which induce it to shoot or induce it to form the seed. That's why after the fire, you'll always have a lot of productivity in the forest because of the compounds that produce coal tar derivatives. So cytokinins are kinetin, zeatin. So we generally focus, we use kinetin in the lab because it's commercially available. Zeatin is from maize, zea maize. It's very expensive and the effects are almost similar to kinetin. One of the interesting compounds is thydiarazon. Okay, so this compound was actually discovered by accident. It's used in, it's an agricultural chemical, but they realized that when they were doing research, it actually had an effect as a cytokine. And because it's much, the cost is much less, you can use it for as a cytokine okay, commercially. Whereas kinetin is very expensive. And the other one is the gibberellin. Actually, there was gibberellin is actually produced by fungus. It was discovered in Japan when they found that uh, rice plants, right? After they grew during harvesting, suddenly they used to all collapse. So there's one fungus, the gibberella kojikori, which is actually in, in the world, it produces gibberellin. So what it does, it when gibberellin is produced, right, the, the uh, cells will basically become turgid, absorb a lot of water, and then the plant it will collapse. So this compound was isolated, and it was determined to be gibberellin. Gibberellin is used in the medium generally to enable propagation, but at very very low concentration because it actually induces cell turgor, makes the cells more absorb more water. Okay, so as I told you, everything is done in ratio. So as you can see, right, in this picture, the depiction, so uh, when you have a cytin, cytokinin and auxin concentration, for instance, you can see the callus in the lower right-hand side. Okay, so that's where you have maximum cytokine, maximum auxin. So if you look up, look up on the right, on your right-hand side, the top of the photograph, you have a highest concentration of auxin, but no cytokinin. So then it forms that tissue. However, when you have a balance, if you look in the middle of the picture, you will see uh, on the bottom of the picture, you will see the plants with the, the callus with the plants. Okay, so that's a balance ratio of oxygen and cytokine. So whenever you have your callus tissue and you want to establish it in vitro, you need to do this optimization. So maybe you'll start with concentration of oxygen of one milligram per liter or 0 0.1 millimolar and then you go up to one millimolar and you find out which is the ideal concentration. So you balance it out. Okay, so then you will have uh, different kinds of organs. So you need to establish this for each and every plant. There is no standard for all plants. Okay. Now, when you have your media, we have to solidify it in order for the tissue to basically be propagated. So you cannot use standard microbiological agar because some of them have mutagen, they, they can tend to mutate the plant tissue. So one of the good, uh, uh, I mean, alternatives is gelan gum. So gelan gum is actually derived from bacteria. So this gelan gum is available and it has a very clear, it forms a clear gel. So you can see any 
contaminants so you can see the formation of roots through the gel so we use a different gum called gel and gum okay the other thing which we add to the media is activated charcoal so the reason why we add activated charcoal is when the plant is growing in the media it's producing a lot of metabolites so it's consuming the sugars and whatever you have given the vitamins and then it's starting to produce waste so if this waste exceeds a certain uh, threshold it will be toxic to the plant so what we do is we add activated charcoal activated charcoal will basically absorb all the secondary metabolites so uh, this is generally used when you use for example teak or any woody tree they will produce more secondary metabolite you need to have charcoal okay so that's uh, these are things about charcoal which you can read through in your lecture notes and there are non defined additives some people add coconut milk honey uh, plant extract tomato juice these are used as non but if you are doing commercial you don't do this generally for orchid you need to add coconut milk because coconut milk has some uh, compounds which are not found in commercial media no one has characterized them until now so they add coconut milk you can coconut milk is the one where you, you basically split the coconut so what's inside is actually sterile so if you can use a syringe and withdraw right the fluid inside the coconut it is pure sterile so we autoclave this and we add it to media and then the other one is lighting so light